I want, what I want to get to scripturally is from Luke chapter 5. This is Jesus speaking with Simon. And you know the story, but I'm going to read it. And just I want to talk about fruitfulness as Christians. Now, it happened that while the crowd, again, this is Luke chapter 5, while the crowd was pressing around him, that's Jesus, and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. And he saw two boats lying at the edge of the lake. But the fishermen had gotten out of them and were washing their nets. And he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little way from the land. And he sat down and began teaching the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered and said, Master, we worked hard all night and caught nothing, but I will do as you say and let down the nets. When they had done this, they enclosed a great quantity of fish and their nets began to break. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat for them to come and help them. And they came and filled both of the boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw that, he fell down at Jesus' feet, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For amazement had seized him and all his companions because of the catch of fish which they had taken. And then down at verse 11, when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. So a couple notes on fruitfulness as Christians. Who is the one that brings the fruit? Jesus. These are fishermen, so fruit for them is fish, right? Being a fruitful fisherman means lots of fish. They fished all night. So in their own strength, and it's not because they were weaklings or inept or anything like that. As far as we know, they were quite good at their job as fishermen. But they tried all night and they got nothing. Because unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. And then Jesus says, go into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. This is a rabbi. So why would he know when to catch the fish. He's telling the professional fishermen, now, now's the time. Go out there and put down your nets. So two key phrases. Peter's response, it sounds a little whiny at first, but there's an important phrase in there. Master, we worked hard all night and caught nothing, but I will do as you say and let down the nets. That's the key phrase. I will do as you say. Christian fruitfulness starts with submission to Christ. It starts with recognizing that he is the king, and I will do as you say. I will let down my nets. Where, where you say to, when you say to, I will put out to sea, I will sow my seed, I will teach my children as you say. I will follow your leadership, because you are the one that can fill the nets. It is only Christ who brings fruitfulness. And is fruitfulness quantified primarily in physical and material things, like fish? No, it does include that. God does make us fruitful in the material world as well as a general rule. When we walk in obedience to Jesus, he makes us bear fruit in money, in stuff. He blesses his children. But this is not a health, wealth, prosperity gospel. And we do know that sometimes God puts his children through seasons of trial and difficulty. So when they had done this, when they obeyed Jesus by faith, when they believed his word, I'm reading into this, pulling it, but this is clearly talking in biblical terms here. They had done this. They enclosed a great quantity of fish and their nets began to break. They bring out another boat. They filled two boats so full of fish that the boats are sinking. Sounds like a point is being made here. Jesus could have just given them a good catch of fish for the day, but no. Jesus gives them so much fish that your boat is sinking. And it, I mean, it's a fishing boat. It's designed for this. That's got to be a lot of fish, right? Jesus is providing abundantly. That's the kind of fruitfulness that only God can bring. God is the kind of God who brings the kind of fruitfulness that breaks your nets and sinks your ships. And in a good way. In a good way. But also, there might be a little bit of a parable in there about being overwhelmed, right? As we are serving Christ... And walking in obedience to Christ. You ever feel like your nets are breaking and your ship is sinking? Just remember that if you're walking in obedience to Christ, he is bringing a catch. And maybe your nets are breaking and your ship is sinking and you don't get why yet. But it's because there's a lot of fish. 
And it's beyond what our material capacity can handle. But Jesus in his sovereignty is bringing it to pass. Then notice Simon's response, and this is huge. When Simon Peter saw that, he was super stoked because he was going to make it rich on this big catch of fish. And so he ran off and, no, that's not what he did. He fell down at Jesus' feet. So Simon got it right. Health, wealth, prosperity gospel is you come to Jesus so that you can get a lot of fish. But the biblical perspective is you obey Jesus, and when he makes you fruitful, you respond in gratitude and worship because it's about him and it's about his glory. And so at every step along the way, it goes back to Christ. I will do as you say, and then I will fall down at your feet. And so we have to pray and fight for hearts that are not stuck on the fish. Because if you're stuck on the fish, you're missing the point. If you're stuck on the business, if you're stuck on the money, if you're stuck on the, uh, if, if I'm a good Christian, then maybe I'll get a, a godly wife. I really want to get married. That, that's a good thing. I'm not knocking that desire. That's a good and godly desire. But Jesus is always first in our hearts and must be so. And Simon Peter got that. He didn't stop and look at the fish laying around in the boats. He stopped and looked at Christ and fell down at his feet. And then when they brought their boats to land... They left everything and followed him. And we know what Jesus says in verse 10, do not fear, from now on you will be catching men. So Jesus never loses sight of the real battle, the real focus. It's more than just the physical world. And he calls them to that as well. That doesn't mean that Christians don't have callings in the real world. We do, and we're called to be fruitful and to walk in obedience to Christ. But also not to lose sight of the spiritual world. But these guys were specifically called to be fishers of men in the sense of, I mean, apostles. Jesus turned them into apostles. And they left everything and followed him. So we are called also to leave everything, follow Christ, and seek to be fruitful for him wherever he puts us. That may not mean that we are fishers of men in a professional sense like the apostles were. Professional is not really the right word. But that's what their, their life calling was. They are now full-time preaching, full-time ministry. That's not the calling of every Christian in the, in the ministry, quote-unquote, sense. But we are all called to be in full-time ministry in whatever sphere God has called us to, to pursue fruitfulness for Christ, to leave everything and follow him. And then, like, one of my favorite examples are the shepherds in the story of, of the birth of Christ. They come, they see Jesus, and then what do they do? They go back to being shepherds, presumably. But they go, they're different shepherds now. And they go their way proclaiming what they just saw. And so that's us. You may still be called to be a shepherd. You may still be called to be a fisherman. But now as you go back to your boats, as you go back to the fields, you go back changed. You go back proclaiming. You are now a, fisher, a fisherman and a fisher of men. You're now a, a shepherd and a shepherd of souls in whatever category God puts you in. You're now a farmer and someone who sows the fields of Christ. It's more than just, but it's also not less than the things that God has called us to in the physical world. So, two main takeaways. Obey and let the blessings turn our hearts to worship and gratitude, not to staring at the provision itself.